Shit, man, we better get ready for practice real quick, man. You know what I'm saying? It's a great day to be a lumberjack, man. Man, you gotta get the body right, you know what I mean? It's one body, you got one body, so you gotta get it right. I just gotta make sure that I go out there loose, you know, I'm ready off the jump. You know, get my blood full, go on and get the muscles right. Cause you know, today's gonna be a good day of practice, man. Gotta be great, every day. What's going on? Hey, we live out here, baby. Let's go. Let's go. Eli is, uh, is actually a very, very detail-oriented player, very, very uh, in tune to just improvement, right? Very trying to improve every single time in what he's trying to do. I'm originally from the Congo, Democratic Republic of Congo. My parents and, and I and my family, we, uh, we fled the war. So when I was two, when my parents uh, moved from Congo and fled the war, they always told me these stories that what happened during the war, like, you know, women were being raped and then people were being, you know, attacked and uh, there wasn't security and, you know, people were being killed unjustly. So that's how my parents had to leave uh, the Congo and then go to Zimbabwe. And then I recall Congo being one of the rape capital of the world during a certain period of time uh, during that war. So those are a lot of things that my parents faced and then they had to move us uh, to another uh, country to a refugee camp. These are some of Robert Mugabe's men, armed and dangerous. Yesterday their task was to stop an opposition rally. Here's how they did it. The opposition has buried nearly 90 of its members. The man who wore this shirt was dragged from his home, shot and stabbed repeatedly. This boy, just four, was beaten and his mother, an opposition supporter, kidnapped. I remember when we were young, there's a flood that happened in a refugee camp where like the water level rise. And I think my mom was the only person, like was, an, was the only adult capable of like saving like the food and getting out everything in the house. So a lot, we'll see like our neighbors and other people, they'll get help, like taking out their food, supplies and stuff like that out their houses when the water was rising. And then my mom was the only woman in our house and she wasn't able to save all the children and then save the food and, and the clothes and everything else. And like, so the little things that we had, it meant the world to us. You know, when you get even the little or the big things, just cherish for the time that it lasts. When we left the refugee camp, because we're getting ready to come to the United States, so we went to Harare, which is the capital city of Zimbabwe, where life is much more better. I mean, to the capital city, the life in the capital city was more, much more faster, much more demanding with like, money was a big issue. They say to take all the kids to school, like I have in my family, we are seven children. So paying school fees for all seven kids and being able to pay rent and then buying food was a lot for my parents. So the struggles of coming to a city where you have to pay for a lot of things, you know, it just shows you that even though you left the refugee camp, but it's still that poverty line that is there that you can't escape because there's so much, but so little money. 
to acquire the resources that we needed to be able to have a sustainable life. Coming to the United States, we're grateful to be in a program with the UN that helps uh, refugees resettle from different parts of the world to uh, countries abroad to have a better future. It took us 16 years for us to wait to relocate to come to America. So that was a really long time for waiting for such a process because like some days we'll lose hope, we'll be like, we'll just never get out of this situation and that will always be a reality. And the transition part was one of the hardest experiences of my life. First it was the food, the language, the language barrier, going to school and just transitioning into the American traditional schools. My parents also having to work a lot of hours and in a lot of time we've never been used to not seeing our parents. So being able to be, you know, to come to America, but at the same time having to face also how fast paced the American lifestyle is. But then I think, you know, with prayers and, and a lot of faith, you know, and then, you know, God does things miraculously and then we're able to come to the United States. In my mind, I just only knew football watching uh, on the television, but I didn't know, you know, any plays or anything. But I just also had always admired, like, how, you know, football is an American tradition. For him to overcome so many adversities from a refugee camp, you think about the language barrier, and just the sport itself, you know, integrating a, a central high school. Everything was really, really new, and there were so many things flying around um, coming to Phoenix. You know, he just, it goes back to, you know, he's grounded, right? His family is everything. So he wants to be a great representation to his family, and he knows here and he understands that anything that he does is a reflection. Let's go! Hey, Seeing my mom working hard, I think at this point I also say that I'm like a resemblance of her, you know, because somebody that's really resilient and hardworking and any circumstances that she has never failed us. And then she has always made us feel special and then she's always put us, put, put us first. And I think it's just only right that I do right things by her and then in everything that I do, football or school, that I put her in mind and I put my family in mind that I'll sacrifice everything to see my family be successful one day. Huh. <laughs> 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 <laughs>